learn how to select the right coloured pencils and pastels in this video with my simple logical technique and if you want the three hour version of this it's over on my Patreon art channel. This video is going to be a lot about colour selection as well and you can see here what I've done is just pulled out some colours on my image editor. I've got videos showing how I do that. It's not a substantial amount of colour variety which is something else I wanted to do on this one. So it is more suitable for people who are real beginners perhaps, who get a bit intimidated with colour. And a little bit later on in the video I'm going to show you how I select colours because ultimately that's the stage you really want to get to quite quickly so that you can then start tackling subjects that interest you rather than you know just following beginner type lessons all the time. You don't want to be doing that for long. Perhaps just one, two, maybe three lessons. I've got beginner lessons where I talk about the colour numbers as well if you want that bit of you know hand holding right at the start of your kind of art career with pastels. But the colour theory I'll talk about later on or mainly really how you select the colour that's going to be applicable to you know pans, coloured pencils and all things like that as well. So when I've got something this complicated with colour in various various places then I want to simplify it and the way I'm going to do that is just to select a colour whether it's white or um, this like creamy Faber-Castell 103 that I've got and all I want to do is just indicate where these lighter areas are because as you can see I've transferred my image I've used white transfer paper because I, in here if I'd used black transfer paper I may very well have ended up showing some black lines in there which I didn't want with white I'm not going to have that potential problem at all so all I'm going to do to start with is just work out kind of where these lighter areas are going to be and I'm just going to use my pencil and very little pressure to indicate as you can see where they are. I'm using such little pressure you can very easily see the paper a kind of surface texture there. But the good thing with the light blue paper is that the texture is quite fine on it when you especially when you compare it to the darker papers like the the dark grey and of course the anthracite which is basically their black would be a lot darker again that's that's the darkest paper they've got and what that usually means is that it turns out to be the grainiest paper as well okay the surface texture the darker the paper the grainier or the the more texture the paper has on the surface. Now as you can see this is going to take me a while to do. So I'm not going to bore you by making you watch everything I'm doing here because all I'm doing in is blocking in the light areas just as an indication of where they're going to live. Okay so that's that creamy white done there and I wanted to talk about colour selection quite a bit in this video. I haven't really covered it in depth for quite a few videos so it's good to go over it again. After you get past that very beginner stage where you know you're doing lessons that use an extremely limited amount of supplies because it wouldn't work any other way and say for instance I would give you the exact perhaps pencil number for various areas okay so let's say perhaps the background was pit 184 okay it wouldn't be but let's just say that was it and then you do that and then I tell you that the legs would be a different color and I'd give you that number once we've gone through one or two of those and you've got a bit of confidence of how pastel goes on paper etc and you've got a bit more confidence you then need to know how to pick the colors for yourself and the reason being is twofold really two obvious things number one if I'm giving you the color all the time you're basically doing kind of like a paint by numbers or draw by numbers exercise where I'm telling you to put a 
a specific color in a specific place and that's okay you can create some of that may you know will give you a bit of confidence maybe impress your family friends yourself whatever but then when you go from that that project that beginner project how are you going to do something for yourself so for instance let's just say you've done two of my very beginner projects got a bit of confidence and then you want to do this butterfly yourself okay say so it's not a project but it's something you've seen online and you want to do this I wonder if you start so you need to be able to pick the correct colors yourself and there's a few ways I've got personally for doing this and that's what I'm going to go through now and I think they're just really logical now you can do them you could do one way or the other way use the one that resonates more with you or do both the alternative is to guess colors okay so let's say for instance you were looking for that yellow that we see on that fluffy section there on this butterfly and you're after that you go through your set and you may say okay um, I think it's going to be this color so you can then get that out of your set and just start applying it okay now that's what most people do or lots of people do when you're experienced like I am and I've done hundreds of pastel drawings you get to know fairly quickly what the colors that you're trying to get are in your set and you don't think of them as a number you don't go oh that's yellow whatever 139 you just go and automatically pick out the one or two colors you think is close the thing is the thing to keep in mind is lots of these colors the color on the back if, let's take this Derwent for instance the color on the back is completely different than the color on the front so you think okay I'll just go with the front but then often the color on the front doesn't always match accurately the color you get on paper and different papers will influence the color of the pencil in different ways now if you've just gone in and you started and you thought yeah that's great that's close without testing the color you could miss that it's quite far off you judge a color by the ones you've already got down so if this one's wrong then when you start to go to the browns that will be wrong if you judge by it when you go to the backgrounds that will be wrong and you see how that snowball effect happens I thought straight off when I was doing pastels because I'd done oils for so many years beforehand and I did a color testing way very similar to this exactly the same really it was just on paper that had a um, shiny surface on it tape so I could wipe the paint off but it works this way with pencils too so let me just grab a few pencils out now what you can do at the start of a drawing okay is think right this is one this is one basic way of doing it okay let's stick with this blue paper this light blue paper because the paper you're using for your tests has got to be the same color as the paper that you're using in your drawing otherwise it doesn't work remember I said the paper color influences the actual color of the pencils how they would look so make sure you're using little off cuts okay when you cut your paper down have a little off cut just about this size to test your paper colors your pencil colors by so okay so let's say I'm after this color it's the beginning of the drawing I'm going to get all my pencil colors out that I think are accurate and they'll be a fantastic starting point so I could just go through my pencils and think okay this looks close is it close nope that's not close mm, could I use it anywhere else once this pencil is out could I use it anywhere else mm, potentially in the background if I'm doing the background in pencils that one could be for that okay so that pit 109 you can see the back color doesn't match the front color and you see as well that the color when I put it on the paper doesn't match the pencil tip color so that's why it's critical to, to do that you could think mm, perhaps it's going to be okay in the shadowy areas so I'll keep that one out 
get another pencil out. You think mm, perhaps it's this one. So it's trial and error. You kind of iron up the pastels. That's a little bit more yellowy than the first one. It's not too far out. Perhaps I'll keep that one out for now. So you just keep going. You think, oh, hang on. That's fairly close. It's not any good for the background, but that, that's getting there now. That's a bit closer. Okay, perhaps for the darker areas. So you think, yeah, I'll have that 184 pit. I'll keep that out for the butterfly. Put that in one section. And then I'm going through and I've got some of these, just a few of these Conti of Paris pastels. Give that one a try. What's that like? Oh, that's really getting closer. Let's take it right to the end. That's getting close, definitely. So you keep that out. And that's how it progresses. Okay, I'd go from that area, then perhaps I'll be working on this, this kind of a muted red. And I'll do that with my pencils and try those out. And it's beneficial to have your pencils stored, especially if you've got a lot of them, in a color, in color order. Okay, so I've just got mine in trays. So one tray would be all my reddish colors and then maybe all my yellow and orange colors. It's easier to pick colors out when you've got them stored like that. So that's one way of knowing that the pencils you've got out are close. And sometimes, in fact, very, very often, even though you may have perhaps 300 pencils, like I've got, perhaps I've got a bit more that I've built up over seven years, you come along and almost always you'll be thinking, that's close enough, it's not perfect, it's good enough. Okay, it's close enough. Don't expect to have the perfect color all the time or even very frequently. And lots of beginners, novices get really hung up on trying to get the exact color. It doesn't make any difference. If this butterfly was in slightly different color, slightly different time of day perhaps, just lit up just a touch differently, we may be looking more to the oranges rather than the yellows in the body area. Okay, so you don't need it to be exact. That's one way of doing it. You'll know at the start your colors are really close, or as close as they can be with your set. And then once you've started blocking in, you can start picking other colors out. You may think, oh, I need to go a little lighter, but at least you've got a great beginning and grounding. Now, another way, and this could be used along with the way I've just said, is to make color swatches. Lots of you will have seen these. I did them years ago. Now, basically, remember I said I keep all my colors in trays. Okay, so this is part of the orange yellow tray. See, I've got orange wrote at the top. So you can see DER 120, so that's Derwent, number 120, Geo. 47, so that's Geoconda, that's that make, Conti, 28, Geoconda, 20. So that's what all these colors in my set look like. These have gone a bit dirty looking now because I've used them so long over the years. They could do with refreshing, and you can refresh them just by getting the same color out and going back over the top. Notice how much darker the gray is, dark gray, than the light blue. If I did these again, I'd use the light blue because it's more of a mid-tone. This is a bit darker than a mid-tone. So the paper is influencing the colors and dulling down the colors just a touch more than they would on the light blue. And this is, light blue is paper I use most frequently. So it makes sense to use that for your color swatches. These don't take long to do. Just a couple of lines, segments, make them as neat or as untidy as you want. And just, you know, fairly large, sized part piece for your colors. How would I use these? So as I said, they take a little while, but I would just come up, grab these off my board, and then start to look and think, pit 184, that's quite close. Helps if you squint. Conti 37, that's quite close. The Derwent 80, might need that one out. So you just go over, you think now we're going way to orange. No good for that area. You may look at the background and think, oh, what's close, way to orange. Squint your eyes and you think, whoa, hang on, that's close, Conti number 12. 
these are quite close too. You may find that the same colour or very similar colours are actually in other supplies as well. Carbofello 215. I may get that one out of the set. Perhaps down here, this Conti 17. I could get that out for the background. And that's how you work it. Whether you're looking at backgrounds, it gets quite obvious when a colour is not going to be correct. But it may be beneficial, like that Pit 187, as we're fading off. And that's how I go through all of it. I look at the colours like that, I get those pencils out, that's close, Geoconda 14. You see, it saves you looking all the time in your sets, even if you've got your sets set out in colour format. This is the quickest way, so a few couple of hours perhaps if you've got say 300 pencils, working them out like this, then makes it much, much quicker. I'm suggesting Conti 14. That's quite close. Much quicker to actually pick your colours out. Now you pick all of those out where you've got close. Sometimes you may want to put one colour over another. And in my drawings and videos I show you how to do that as well. And you'll see it in this video on Patreon. Once you've got all your colour out your sets, you don't have to keep going back to your sets all the time. This saves you a heck of a lot of time in the long run. Now with pan pastels, if you was doing the same type of thing with pan pastels, it's only going to be beneficial to show you the major colours. Okay, because there's nowhere near as many pan pastels as pencils, the way pans work, you're generally mixing them. So this is not as beneficial for pan pastels, but it will show you, as I said, the major colour. So you know which colour is closest to that one in the background. And that could be, for instance, this burnt sienna. You may think that and a touch of white, that would do it. So at least you would know that, whereas if you pulled out, say, this orange, you can instantly see, no, that's way too vibrant and off colour. So it works with pans as well. And also sticks, because there's lots of sticks, soft pastel sticks, just like pencils. So if you wanted to, again, you could do another swatch, just with your sticks. But you'd have to keep the numbers of them as well. Okay, so that's how you can pick colours and get them quite accurate straight off. And then it'd be a case of using your test pieces, putting your colour down, checking it out right at the beginning, and then you know you're accurate because lots of beginners jump this stage and after spending three, four, five hours doing drawing, all of a sudden they're thinking, why is mine looking so different than the reference photo? And it's because the initial colours weren't accurate enough. Okay, so hopefully that's helped explain how you can start drawings and pick the colours. Okay, so with that in mind, I've put in this creamy colour already. So now I know where these separations are, the parts that's going to be red and blue. That's quite easy. I've also done the same on the body, so I can see now which are going to be the darker browns. To be able to judge, remember I said that art is all about judging one colour and one tone next to each other. Colour, we know what that is. Tone, that's the lightness and darkness of it. For me to be able to judge the body and the wings, I can judge them against each other. But I like to put a bit of background in first, because you can see with this subdued background here on the back of the wing, that makes the lighter section of the wing stand out. If the lighter section of the wing was dark, the same tone as the background, it wouldn't stand out. Okay, so we know the wing is a lighter tone. Same about the light edge here, not the front part, the pinky part, the whiter edge. So if I want to judge the body, the head, the wings, I like to put a little background in first. So you just get a pan, Dip your pan pastel tool in it and then if I grab a piece of just regular printer paper let's put it here for now so you can all see it okay you see it like that I like to put some on the printer paper this acts as my palette then I can have my scrap paper 
try that. You see how it looks different than on the printer paper, so never go by your colours on the printer paper. And what do we think? Is it close? No, it's way, way too dark. So I could add some white, or I could add perhaps this kind of orange tint, this light salmon colour. Let's try that, put that in there, mix the two together. Don't go by the colour that's on here, go by the colour on your test piece. That's not far off. I've probably lost a little bit of the warmth. So I could think maybe I need to brighten that up. Orange. A little bit of orange. That's probably too much. Let's see what happens. Not bright enough, but now that's getting close with the colour. And remember, we don't need to be exact. So let's get some more pastel going. The white, the brown, touch of orange. I only want to do a little bit anyway, just starting off. Bit lighter, close enough. Close enough. And that's basically how I select colours, okay? And obviously in the three hour version I go into this and hold draw in then and complete the demonstration. And there's literally hundreds and hundreds of hours worth of lessons like this from beginner all the way up to super advanced on my Patreon art channel. It costs from just four dollars a month. And stick right to the end, watch the end, I want to show you some of the amazing improvements some of my Patreon members have made. This is going to blow you away.